It's baffled scholars for two millennia. It is a puzzle made of multi-dimensional elements, an enigma with roots that reach back to the dawning of time, perhaps before. Daniel explained part of it. Ezekiel and Isaiah had glimpses into it. John saw it all for the time of the end. That time is now. Join Derek and Sharon Gilbert on a journey that spans the course of history, from Eden to Mount Hermon, from Hermon to Babel, from Babel to Rome, from Rome to the cross, and from there to us. Biblical prophecy is coming true before your eyes, and to understand it, you must discern the times both then and now. It's time to unravel the threads of this all-encompassing prophetic paradox. It's time to unravel Revelation. From Isaiah to Revelation, welcome to Unraveling Revelation from Skywatch TV. I'm Derek Gilbert. I am Sharon Gilbert, and we're back in studio this week. In fact, we're back. Uh, we weren't, didn't have a new program last week because of Labor Day. Yeah. And also, we were at camp. We finally got to go to camp. We went to summer camp. <laughs> we spent a weekend in... I made uh, crafts. <laughs> <laughs> Weekend in High Hill, Missouri, at uh, the Warrior Summit and Retreat, hosted by Jamie Walden of oh Omega Dynamics. Gosh, what a what wonderful a, gathering! I love that camp. It was incredible, and, and uh, it was really good food, but really good fellowship. Yes, and we got to hang out with Tim Alberino. Yes, that was wonderful because the discussions we had with Tim Alberino show that we are thinking along the same lines when I it know. comes to what's happening. In the, he's got a forthcoming book that uh, we're really looking forward to titled Birthright and uh, should be out very soon. We'll, we'll talk with Tim about that when that comes out. We will indeed. Uh, boy. That, yeah, that was we some can't really good stuff. The stuff because we don't want to spoil his book. Yeah, but uh, we'll just steal it. <laughs> uh, before we dive into uh, Revelation. Back into Revelation 9 and the judgment coming on the earth, we, we just sort of touched on that. But you wanted to go back to Isaiah 24 through 20, early chapter 27, and I think this makes a lot of sense. There are so many things in Isaiah. We can't spend nearly enough time in Isaiah and Ezekiel, I mean, and yeah. Job. And in Daniel. And of course, we already did stuff. Daniel, but... Uh, it's like all of the Bible is important. It fits together. It does. Yeah. So uh, Isaiah 24 uh, begins a section of that book that uh, deals with God's judgment on the whole earth. The very first line is, uh, well, it's a little different, and I think you can take a number of interpretations here. So Isaiah 24, beginning at verse 1, Behold, Yahweh will empty the earth and make it desolate. Stop right there. Um, it's Eretz, mm -hmm. which alternatively could mean empty the land, but when you empty out something, Generally oh. means you pour out the contents from the inside. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So when you empty the earth, does it mean you're bringing the underworld out? Well, that's a really good, that's a really good point. I hadn't even thought about that because you're right. The, the arets can also refer to the underworld. The cognate mm -hmm. term in Ugaritic, mm -hmm. which is the Semitic language from the Amorite kingdom of Ugarit around the time of the judges, because means he's underworld. Not, he's not destroying all life. Right, right. So Yahweh emptying the empty, earth and make it desolate. Empty the underworld and make it desolate, and he will twist its surface and scatter its inhabitants. So he's emptying the underworld, twisting its surface and scattering the inhabitants of the earth itself. Now, when you get to verse 2, Ooh. you realize that we're, verse 2 talks about humans. But is it possible these are parallel? One is talking about the un other underworld. The other is talking about the upper world. Uh, I think you're right. Um, it, that's what uh, scholars, I believe, call a, uh, what do they call it, a, a bicolon, a pair of adjacent lines of Not poetry. Not a semicolon. No, no, no. <laughs> that's only a partial, yeah. a bicolon, pair of adjacent lines of poetry where the second echoes the meaning of the first. So you've got these contrasting lines. Mm -hmm. Behold the Lord, and, and again, in all caps, we say Yahweh, just so that we remember. I mean, it's not a sacred name thing. No, God he knows has a lot of different names. Right. But the Yahweh name is always important because that's how I, he identified himself to Moses. Right. And there's a reason why the writer uses it mm -hmm. instead of Adonai or El Shaddai. Exactly. Uh, so behold, Yahweh will empty the earth or empty the underworld and make it desolate. And he will twist its surface the and scatter its inhabitants. Surface. So you've got it's sort of an echo. Right. 
<clears throat> Verse 2, And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the slave, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the creditor, so with the debtor. I'm going back to, I just want to go back to this because, yeah, emptied. Um, lay waste is an alternative. Sorry, I was mm -hmm. just going back and just making sure that this idea of emptying the underworld is correct, but I think it is, it is a possibility. It's a possibility. Now, because the he's not erasing all humans. True. I mean, he is emptying one, uh, but again, and we get this sense that uh, from the rest of those uh, first three or first two verses that mm -hmm. he's comparing one and the other. Let me say, too, that this has never happened. Never in history has the entire globe been twisted. Mm -hmm. And the inhabitants scattered. Yeah. Right. So uh, another reason that we don't believe in a, uh, uh, a, a first century fulfillment of all end times prophecy. No, I think that there were some immediate that made it clear that the far distant prophecy was true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the preterist and the partial preterist, eh, nah, no, can't, I can't really go along with that. Uh, verse 3, the earth shall be utterly empty and utterly plundered. And again, this is the arets. So now the Septuagint translation suggests that the Jewish translators of the Hebrew texts two to three centuries before the birth of Jesus, took it to mean the, uh, the inhabited world. Yeah, I want to go back and see what it says here in the Septuagint. Uh, but the Lord is about to waste the world and will make it desolate and will lay bare the surface of it and scatter them that dwell therein. Mm -hmm. The Lexham English Septuagint, which is a more modern Septuagint translation, uh, reads this way. Look, the Lord is destroying the inhabited world and will desolate it. So it's, it's almost as though the translators were trying to clarify a little bit. But, but I think it is possible, and I think you're right, that's really insightful, sweetheart. Um, that first verse, empty the earth and make it desolate, twist the surface and scatter its inhabitants. Well, okay, if you're going to empty it, why are you scattering them? That's, that's almost contradictory. Yeah, it, it really does seem that way, and unless, this, it's, unless it goes back to the idea of opening up the pit. Right, right. And we'll get to that in Isaiah 26 and why this all connects together when you get Isaiah 26 verses 13 through 19, if you want to look ahead. Um, I think this idea connects to that. Ah. Yeah. Uh, the earth shall be utterly empty and utterly plundered, for Yahweh has spoken this word. The earth mourns and withers, the world languishes and withers, the highest people of the earth languish. The earth lies defiled under its inhabitants, for they have transgressed the laws and violated the statutes, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse devours the earth, and its inhabitants suffer for their guilt. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are scorched, and few men are left. Can I stop you there? Because the irony about this language is that it's almost like the Lord is saying, in the last days, mm -hmm. things will happen in nature, if you want to call it that, that make it seem like the world is going to end. Mm -hmm. Almost mm -hmm. like we lose two-thirds of the animal, you know, variety. That was a headline this morning, by the way. Um, climate change activists mm -hmm. would look at this chapter and go, well, see? Yeah, we've been talking about this all along. Except that it doesn't say mankind does this. Right. It says the Lord, right. Yahweh, is doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, verse 7, the wine mourns, the vine languishes, all the... Languishes. Mer languishes. Yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to work around. Broke, yeah, broke part of a molar over the weekend, oh. so I'm kind of working around that. Oh, I so get yeah. that. I do, I do. The vine languishes, all the merry-hearted sigh. The do you want me to read it? Is that easier for you? Uh, yeah, sure. The mirth of the tambourines is stilled. The noise of the jubilant has ceased. The mirth of the lyre is still, L-Y-R-E, not L-I-A-R. No more do they drink wine with singing. Strong drink is bitter to those who drink it. <laughs> Can you just see the bars closing? <laughs> In a way, this No, sort those of... are considered essential businesses. <laughs> not the churches, <laughs> not just the, the bars. Churches. The uh. wasted city is broken down. Every house is shut up so that none can enter. You know, in a way, 
This is lockdown language. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's almost like everybody is terrified. Well, if you are twisting the entire surface of the earth and emptying the underworld, yeah, it'd be pretty terrifying. Mm -hmm. There is an outcry, verse 11, there is an outcry in the streets for lack of wine. <laughs> Can't go to the <laughs> hairdressers. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's not in there. <laughs> All joy has grown dark. This, the gladness of the earth is banished. Desolation is left in the city. The gates are battered into ruins. In the old world, the gates of your city was a major, major point of entry. Sure. And if they are battered into ruins, you have no way of keeping the evil out mm -hmm. and keeping your people from leaving. <laughs> well, th there's that too, yeah. Um, but they, yes, they did believe in walls in the ancient world. They did. Yeah. They did. For thus it shall be in the midst of the earth among the nations, as when an olive tree is beaten. Now you go and you, you, you get to the olives to drop. Mm -hmm. In a way, this picture of the olive tree being beaten, the olive tree is often representing Israel. When you shake the whole earth, the evil shakes out, or what's good shakes out, depending on what you're looking for. But also we see the stars of heaven falling. Remember that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, uh, we've read that in the past. For thus it shall be in the midst of the earth among the nations, as when an olive tree is beaten, as at the gleaning, when the grape harvest is done. Gleaning is when you go back in and whatever's left after harvest, you go in and get that. Remember that rule that you had to leave a little bit at the edges? Mm -hmm, right. So that poor people could come in and get something? Mm -hmm. They lift up their voices. They sing for joy over the majesty of Yahweh. They shout from the West. Every horrible thing that could possibly happen, though it's almost like the world has been turned inside out. Mm -hmm. Everybody is terrified. And then what happens? They lift up their voices. They sing for joy. Mm -hmm. Over the majesty of Yahweh, they shout from the west. Therefore, in the east, give glory to Yahweh. In the coastlands of the sea, give glory to the name of Yahweh, the God of Israel. The name is Hashem. Mm -hmm. That's Jesus. This, this is interesting because the Septuagint translation is a little different. Uh, verse I've 14 reads, that. These people will call out with a cry, but those left behind on the land will be cheered at the same time by the glory of the Lord. The water of the sea will be troubled. Oh. Because of this, the glory of the Lord, verse 15 now, because of this, the glory of the Lord will be among the islands of the sea. The name of the Lord will be esteemed. Now, what verse was that? Did you end the Verses 14 and 15. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, Over the majesty of the Lord, they shout from the west. But in the Hebrew, the actual phrase is, in the, the, the majesty of the Lord, they shout from the sea. They shout from Yom. Well, that's really interesting. Because Yom, Yom being another name for the chaos dragon. Right. The uh, seven-headed, you know, the encircler with seven heads, yeah. the uh, twisting serpent, the fleeing serpent, which we will get to in Isaiah 27. So, yeah, it, uh, it, it's in the Hebrew. Over the majesty of the Lord, they shout from Yom. They shout from the sea. And, the, and therefore, in the east, that phrase in the Hebrew is, in the realm of light. Therefore, in the realm of light, or with the fires, give glory to Yahweh. In the realm of light. That's We're going to have to do some digging on uh, that verse, that passage, because honestly, I don't have a ready answer for that. No. Uh, again, Septuagint. Because of this, the glory of the Lord will be among the islands of the sea. That's not at all like what we've got here. Probably a difficult to translate passage. Isaiah was known for his love of wordplay, first of all, but he also brought in a lot of loan words from Egyptians that scholars yeah. are only just within the last 10 years beginning, beginning to recognize. That is so, so true. Uh, one of the alternate translations in verse 14 is from the sea mm -hmm. instead of from the west. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are in Israel, the sea is to the west, the Mediterranean Sea, but the sun would be coming from the east. Yeah. Yeah, the Hebrew text in, in verse 15 in the east, reads literally in the lights. So in the lights, 
but some scholars have suggested uh, regrouping the consonants to read along the sea coasts, which is uh, copied in the next line or repeated in the next line. Yes. So uh, you've got yeah. a parallelism there. In verse 15, yeah. um, So th this well, is one I of the reasons we like the uh, New English translation because the translators include their notes. So you can figure out, okay, what were they thinking when they translated the Hebrew into or the Greek into English? Exactly. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a break and then we will come back and read the rest. We hope we could get through this chapter because it's got a lot of really cool stuff. Well, oh, yes. Cool in that we see Yahweh intervening and the things that he's allowing to happen because it gives glory to his name. Including the deaths of the gods that's ahead on Unraveling Revelation. The world is on an end times collision course and time is short. But the chronology of the future is finally unveiled in the Antichrist Final Solution Special Collection. In this incredible offer, you'll receive the new book by best-selling authors Terry James and Dr. Thomas Horn, Antichrist and the Final Solution, the step-by-step -step roadmap to the chronological events unfolding now through to the return of Jesus Christ, including the imminent arrival of Antichrist and a totalitarian one-world government. You'll discover the truth about what's fomenting chaos in the streets, the arrival of the false prophet, the coming third temple, the battle of Armageddon, and your own destiny. You'll also receive the new book by Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis, Collision Course, that details how America is approaching a moral tipping point which demands we change course and fight to reclaim our moral compass before it's too late. Plus, back in print for the first time in decades, Dispensations, the complete Clarence Larkin collection. This beautifully bound, oversized collectible book includes Clarence's legendary works on dispensational truth, rightly dividing the word and the book of Daniel. We're also including the data disc of Clarence Larkin's nearly 200 hand-drawn charts and images that reveal the Bible's prophetic timeline from the beginning to present day and to the end. But that's not all. We're also including the brand new Skywatch TV Classics Volumes 1 and 2. This two-disc collection is valued at $150 all by itself and includes the best of the most popular audio series in the history of our ministry. Now, for the first time ever, you can re-experience entire audio series like Something Transhuman This Way Comes, The Coming Replacement Humans, As It Was in the Days of Noah, Conspiracy Theory Special Edition, the coming zombie apocalypse and psychotronic warfare all on two digitally remastered volumes. Also, backed by popular demand, you'll receive the Best of Defender Publishing ebook collection on Datadisc, featuring 70 of the most information-packed, best-selling books in Defender history. These full-length works are in popular ebook formats, so you can read them on EPUB. PDF, Kindle, and other handheld electronic devices valued at over $700 all by itself. Sold separately, these items hold a retail value of $940. Yours now for your donation of only $35 plus shipping and handling while supplies last. The times we live in today and the future we're headed for explained. The urgently needed Antichrist Final Solution Special Collection is available now at skywatchtvstore.com. Order now or call 1-844-750-4985. Here are the upcoming conferences and events featuring the team from Skywatch TV. For a full list and complete information, log on to skywatchtv.com slash schedule or download the free Skywatch TV mobile app for iOS, Android, and Amazon Kindle Fire tablets. Welcome back to Unraveling Revelation from Skywatch TV. I'm Derek Gilbert. Hi, I'm Sharon Gilbert, and we want to remind you we're going to Israel in April of 2021. Go to skywatchinisrael.com for all the information. And if you've bought this huge veneration package, or even the smaller one, you get the Search for the Rephaim DVD. Mm -hmm. And in that, you will see all the stuff we did last year, and you'll also see the serpent mound of Bershon. Yes. And we're going to be visiting that next year. Yeah. Uh, visit the website unravelingrevelation.tv. There's a link there that uh, will take you to the website with more information, or you just go to skywatchinisrael.com. Also, uh, based on a suggestion by a couple of viewers now, uh, we've put a playlist of our videos beginning with number one 
in the right-hand column at unravelingrevelation.tv. The very so, first program. Right. So if you want to follow us and go through, starting with the first one and follow in order, you can go there, find that playlist, and uh, it links to the videos at Vimeo in uh, HD, and you can play those there. If you've got the Vimeo app on your... Uh, <laughs> on your, your Roku or Apple TV, you can actually play those up on your TV. That's awesome. Yeah. Got to get that. Uh, by the way, um, we have a new book coming out. Ah, yes. In November, and it is called Giants, Gods, and Dragons. Yes, here's a uh, mock-up of the uh, cover. We don't have the... The actual book in, in yeah. our hands. Yeah, and that's why yeah. the, 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 <laughs> the endorsement on the top says Lorem Ipsum, <laughs> but... <laughs> this is Doctor what, endorsement. Yeah, this is essentially <laughs> what it looks like. Uh, Jeffrey Martis is a genius when it comes to artwork. So uh, this is essentially what the cover will look like. And it covers what we're discussing here and just shows the reality of these characters in the Bible that so many of us have been taught were just imaginary. Oh, the gods of the pagans, they didn't really exist. They were just idols. No, they really did exist. And they really do take an active role, not just in history, but in Revelation, and that's why we study Revelation the way we do. Amen. Well, starting with verse 16. From the ends of the earth, we hear songs of praise. From the ends of the earth. Can you imagine the whole earth singing praises to mm -hmm. Yahweh? Of glory to the righteous one, but I say, I waste away, I waste away. Woe is me. For the traitors have betrayed. With betrayal, the traitors have betrayed. Now, I being Isaiah, mm -hmm. so I'm not really sure what he's, what, there, there were a lot of things he was dealing with then, so uh, wh whether or not he's referring to those on the earth that have still betrayed and they haven't been judged yet, could be. Terror in the pit and the snare are upon you, O inhabitants of the earth. And this is a hint at the supernatural activity of mm -hmm. some of these entities. The word terror is pachad, which mm -hmm. was a known deity, a Canaanite deity, a demon of terror. Exactly. Um, but interestingly, terror, pit, and snare in Hebrew all sound alike. Pit is pachat, and snare is um, based on the same root as uh, pachad. So it's, again, Isaiah, Isaiah with wordplay. Word. Yeah. And the Holy pachad, Spirit. Pachat, yeah. Holy Spirit, best writer ever. Mm -hmm. Terror and the pit and the snare are upon you, O inhabitant of the earth. He who flees at the sound of the terror shall fall into the pit. <laughs> Flee from pachad, you fall into the pachat. Yeah. <laughs> and he who climbs out of the pit shall be caught in the snare. Mm -hmm. For the windows of heaven are opened, yeah. and the foundations of the earth tremble. The earth is utterly broken. The earth is split apart. The earth is violently shaken. Now, this is an interesting word, uh, the word translated broken here, or split apart rather, is only used a couple of other places in Scripture. And one of them is in um, later in Isaiah when he discusses the uh, dividing Rahab. Mm -hmm. um, so what, uh, and Rahab, an alternate name for Leviathan, the primordial chaos that had to be subdued so that God could bring forth order as we perceive it. And that's just it. I think we, we, what we are seeing here is the a, a replay or a retelling or a, a possibly even a reprise mm -hmm. of the chaos comp. Because if indeed we're correct and it is not removing all of the inhabitants of the earth, but emptying the earth, bringing the underworld out, turning the earth inside out in a way, um, that would include bringing out the chaos dragon. Uh, and and this, this idea that uh, the, the shaking or the division of the earth that took place um, here is is reflective of the shaking or the division that took place when God subdued Rahab Leviathan before even the creation of Eden. Yes. Um, that, uh, I think Isaiah 51, 9 is what I was thinking of. Uh, when you cut Rahab in, in pieces, I'm going to have to go back and look. Sorry, I'm going to have to put this up on the lower third here because I know I've got this in my presentation. I just can't bring the verse to mind. But what we're describing here and what Isaiah is describing here is a primordial... I'll uh, keep uh, reading and you, you see if you can find it. The earth is utterly broken. The earth is split apart. The earth is violently shaken. The earth staggers like a drunken man. It sways like a hut. Its transgressions lie heavy upon it and it falls and will not rise again. On that day, Yahweh will punish the host of heaven in heaven and the kings of the earth on the earth. 
They will be gathered together as prisoners in a pit. They will be shut up in a prison, and after many days, they will be punished. Then the moon will be confounded and the sun ashamed, for Yahweh of hosts reigns on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, and his glory will be before his elders. Okay, it's uh, actually Psalm 74 was what I was trying to think of. Uh-huh. Psalm 74, verse 13, you divided the sea, you divided Yom by your might. You broke the heads of the sea monsters or dragons. The heads of Leviathan. Yeah. You crushed the heads of Leviathan. Uh, this is the subduing of, of chaos in the primordial chaos. That word you translated as divided is uh, only used again where the earth is split apart. Mm -hmm. And what we're describing here, what Isaiah is describing, like the psalmist, is a divine judgment that is so violent that the earth is literally split apart. And that's uh, reflected above with, uh, you know, Isaiah emptying, saying the Lord will empty the earth, make it desolate, twist its surface and scatter its inhabitants. Next week, we're going to start with verse 21. So let's mark that. And we will dive deeply into that. But... I think this may be one of the reasons that the the Lord will create a new heaven and a new earth because the current earth has so much history behind it that is 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 connected to evil. Yes, that's that's very true. And And it's also the prison for Leviathan. Right, right. And the judgment that is coming will echo, as you said, the judgment that uh, took place earlier on this primordial chaos. God subdued it by Genesis 1 verse 2 in order to bring forth the order that we perceive Mm -hmm. in this this wonderfully ordered, uh, balanced at the the subatomic scale, because if the weights of the subatomic particles were even off just a little bit, there would be no order. It would be chaos. But that struggle divided, split, literally shook the earth. And we see that reflected here. Isaiah 24, 19, the earth utterly broken, the earth split apart, the earth violently shaken. We see it in the opening of the sixth seal, the earthquake resurrection. We will see it again with another earthquake that takes place uh, later in the book of Revelation. So these shakings are not simply um, natural occurrences. No, they're they're not. It has to do in some places, uh, places as what's going on inside the earth. Inside the earth, and of course, uh, at the instigation of God, as He brings returns and brings judgment to the earth. Oh, uh, again, Please. this divine judgment will be so powerful; the earth will literally be shaken, and the rulers, the leaders, the kings, saying, "You know, fall on us, hide us from the the wrath of the Lamb." Exactly. So next week, starting with verse twenty-one, and oh boy, is there stuff coming! Oh yeah, God smacks down the host of heaven in heaven and the kings of the earth on the earth. Next week is. We continue with Isaiah here on unraveling, <laughs> here on unraveling Revelation.